Welcome to the Loan Officer Training with the Mortgage Calculator. Today, we're going to be talking about your first 90 days as a loan officer, which is not just applicable to new loan officers. We'll be talking about some stuff that everybody can use here. Give us just a few moments to go live on all the different platforms. Uh, we put the chat up on the screen. Feel free to drop any comments there in the chat, any questions you have for Jose as he goes through the presentation as well. You're welcome to drop there in the chat. I see some comments were already too, already uh, coming in. Appreciate that for those of you who were tuning in nice and early. Remember, we do this 7 p.m. Eastern time every weekday where we do a loan officer training on a different subject. And we'll get started here in just a moment. Also be sure to check out our daily rates live shows, which we do 11 a.m. Eastern every weekday as well in the mornings where we go through some live rates and we do a deep dive into a different topic there, a little bit shorter, but we do do a deep dive into a different loan topic <clears throat> every weekday there on the Daily Rates Live Show. So looks like we are live on all the different platforms, so we can go ahead and get it started. As you tune in, please drop comments there in the chat, and you can also ask any questions you have as we go through here today. But we'll go ahead and take the chat off the screen for now, and we will go ahead and get into it. Here. All right. So welcome, everyone. My name is Kyle Hershey. I'm the COO of The Mortgage Calculator, joined here by our president, Nick Hershey, and our sales manager, Jose Gonzalez. We are a correspondent lender that specializes in non-QM loans. And every Tuesday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we do this loan officer training, training for loan officers on a different topic each week. So Jose Gonzalez, our sales manager with 28 years of experience as a loan officer and a realtor, today is going to be talking about your first 90 days as a loan officer. But again, there's things in here that apply to everyone. So Jose, I'll let you go ahead and uh, take it away from here. All right. Good evening, everybody. So here are some strategies and tactics to help you in your first 90 days to basically generate business, getting down to the nitty gritty. So these, some of these things are, are, are activities you'll be doing while you're doing your training. Now, most of you should be done with your training and less. keep that in mind. Uh, but while you are ramping up your business, especially if you're new, there's a lot of things that you can do to uh, get your business uh, off the ground floor, right? So let's jump right into it. All right. So I first want to get a little bit into, let's define a mortgage loan originator, right? Because depending on the company that uh, you are at, you could have different duties, right? Um, at the mortgage calculator, we're more about loan consultants. We are definitely not about application takers, right? We're about adding value to the transaction. We are about being hands-on in the process, right? You're hands-on in the process. You will definitely build more rapport with the customer. Uh, it's going to make the whole process a lot easier if you hit any obstacles along the way if you have some good rapport built up it's going to go a long way in the goodwill department that you've built up and in the end uh you, you know you'll have a satisfied customer and you will get more referrals you'll get business from these people that's what that's what it's all about if you want to have a sustainable career as a mortgage loan originator, you can't just be always trying to reinvent the wheel. At some point, you know, your business has to be feeding you from everything that you've put into it. So what, what how do we define mortgage loan originator? Uh, we view it as the, 
the main now obviously will expand on this in detail but in a nutshell the mortgage loan originator consults the borrower with their real estate financing needs so notice there that uh, the initial word is consult right we are consulting the borrower we're not selling the borrower a rate at all we're not uh, high pressure salespeople here we are consultants we empower the borrower the borrower educated decision and make everything easy so what are some of the duties uh, that we view for the uh, mortgage loan originator well as part of the consultation that occurs well he the mortgage loan originator will pre-approve the borrower, provide guidance, right, to ensure the borrower applies for the product most applicable for their specific loan scenario and objectives. So we packed quite a lot of information in that sentence, right? There's a lot of things going on right there that is uh, so in line with how we do things here, right? You want to make sure again, if you provide the proper consultation, everything should fall in line, right? Uh, we're not going to have people applying for random programs that have no bearing, like uh, applying for a full doc loan when they really are dealing with a DSER uh, loan, right? So totally not full doc there. So in specific here in detail as part of this pre-approval uh the mlo is going to assess the customer's needs explore all options and introduce all applicable loan types and at the mortgage calculator that's quite a lot of loan types that we have here quite a lot of loan products we're just not about a cookie cutter loan here uh you know agency loan aus you know we offer that plus 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 so the mlo is going to interview the applicant to determine financial eligibility and feasibility of the loan program selected right remember the interviewing this when it, it, when possible right? i know some people don't want to talk they want to do everything via email via text but please you do have to attempt to get additional details over the phone and as part of that pre-approval process also uh the mlo is going to evaluate the credit worthiness of the borrower by reviewing the loan application and documentation and ensuring compliance to the guidelines of the program selected or the program desired so again notice what we're doing here now if it's agency it's pretty easy you got automated underwriting does a lot of that for you if it's non-qm you are the automated underwriting you are the filter like i like to say you will be reviewing the guidelines and ensuring that your customers uh docs credit and everything associated with the application uh complies with whatever guidelines you're looking to submit through so we got the mlo doing the pre-approval process and then once we have the application mlo is responsible for getting this closed right the mlo is going to communicate with the borrowers gather necessary documents and ensure that the file is disclosed in a compliant manner you know we love we always are talking about hey your file got triggered you have three days to disclose that's just the law remember disclosing has nothing to do with the file being uh complete with documents it's about uh, legally having to disclose within three days when the file is triggered. And then the MLO is also going to assist with processing and closing of the loan. Now, that doesn't mean the MLO is necessarily going to be the processor. However, on brokered loans, we do give uh, the MLOs the option to self-process or use the processor. Uh, in this case, would be a third-party processor, 
But on the non-Dell deals, we have our own internal processing. But you will assist with the processing means you do not just turn the file over, pass the baton, and walk away from the deal, right? That's not how we do it here at the mortgage calculator. You will assist with the processing, uh, gathering of whatever docs may be needed. Uh, we will, Documents will be requested from the borrower, uh, but the MLO will be responsible for following up with the borrower for those documents and anything else needed to close the loan. Basically, you will go that extra mile and we're, and I was just uh, got off a meeting with someone where we were talking about building trust with the borrower. You're going to go an extra mile to build trust, uh, to build their loyalty and satisfaction throughout the whole process, throughout underwriting, uh, closing, because the whole idea here obviously is build rapport, be seen as the MLO of the deal. It's you, you're the captain of that ship and try to get uh referrals for future business a happy transaction so these are how we view here our mortgage loan originator our loan consultant at the uh mortgage calculator now what what are some you know what are considerations let's say i'm not going to say steps to take important considerations uh uh when you are starting out 80 days, you are at the beginning. You could be at the beginning of your career in general as as a, as a loan officer or just at the beginning of your career here at the mortgage calculator, right? Uh, maybe you came over from the agency world. Now you're in the, uh, you know, at the mortgage calculator where, where we do agency and a whole lot more, right? So first and foremost, if you get an idea of on, on how I was describing our view of mortgage loan originator duties, uh, uh, it's very important for you to understand the company culture or the corporate culture, as I like to say it, and the different processes involved, right? For different things, processes involved with uh, like HR type processing processes, and then just processes with your training, and then with your licensing, and then with the loan origination, right? Uh, and luckily, we do have a lot of uh, information in the knowledge center. The very first uh, section, number one, uh, covers a lot of things to get you going at the mortgage calculator. So we really like to break it down so you can understand where we're coming from. Synergy is most easily created when individual and company culture and processes are aligned with those of the MLO. So, for example, if you're a totally hands-off individual, uh, just want to just take the application and pass it off, then you know you'd be a good referral referring but really that's not the mlo um that we would be envisioning here at the mortgage calculator nor really at many companies now you know there has been a paradigm shift in the industry as companies are looking for value as well it's not just borrowers looking for increased value from their mlos uh, companies are looking for increased values from their right. The application taker has gone by the wayside as most of those companies were just shedding excess weight, which was MLOs, you know, left and right. And, and processes were uh, being streamlined and centralized and all this kind of stuff that's going on while they were getting rid of a bunch of people in these companies. So, Corporate cultures have shifted, right? So MLOs need to be able to shift as well. Uh, don't hold on to old ways that didn't work, right? The industry has changed. You got to change along with it. To be able to manage the process, I mean, this sounds pretty obvious, but it, you know, it's that obvious that I have to emphasize it. To be able to manage the process, you have to know the process, right? So how are you going to 
you know, work well with your processor if you don't really know what a processor is supposed to do? How are you going to be able to properly get a file disclosed if you don't even know what it's supposed to be, you know, what are trade requirements, what, what, uh, what is expected from your disclosure. And we have guidance for all of this videos and a lot of guidance and training for all of this. So loan submission, closing and compliance. Those are all five important segments of the loan process of your job as an MLO that you definitely need to understand. So you got to understand our corporate culture and how things work around here and how to create synergy from your actions. And you have to definitely understand which we have a lot of training and a lot of guidance. When Nick Kyle and I uh, started out on this mission, we were complaining that uh, when we were initially at the uh, branch of an FDIC bank, uh, first creating the team, we were complaining that the company didn't have any of the guidance that we've created. It was pretty frustrating. We were getting all these new people and we had nothing to share with them to help them going. So we went about creating what you see today, right? Knowledge center and all the good stuff that's in there. So know, know your processes, right? Know your corporate culture build relationships with colleagues and contacts, right? Real important. You don't want to just come on board and then have to like learn stuff through osmosis, which, um, you know, it's like what you have to do in a lot of places you get in and then you hope that you figure it out somehow or another because you know they don't have mentorships and a lot of companies set up well we saw the need for that so we have team leaders right which is your mentor so all mlos are assigned to team leaders we're growing the number of team leaders as we speak so it's whether you get your mentorship from a team leader or additional mentorship opportunities from industry individuals who you may befriend and you know pick their brains so to speak it's always important to try to find good mentorship you'd end uh networking right we talk about the importance of professional networking and establishing valuable partnerships so realtors, well, that's an obvious one, right? Uh, we want to get that purchase business. We want the realtors to be reaching out to us and, uh, you know, give us that hot potato. Here it is. We got a contract, you know, <laughs> pre-approve him, you know, and get him done and get the application. Let's go. So that's an easy one. Uh, lenders or brokers, uh, you would say, why would you want to network with, you know, other lenders and brokers. Why? They all don't have what we have, all the different products that we have. And we do have opportunities for other companies to do uh, business purpose referrals, for example. You start talking to them about all the great products that you have. And they're going to start looking at you like a deer looking at a headlights of an oncoming car. And next thing you know, you're going to get some professional referrals. Attorneys, that's another good source of business for a lot of different reasons. Death in the family, right? Probate, estate attorney, divorce attorney. <laughs> Unfortunately, those are two of the biggest reasons uh, for uh, transactions occurring. Death of somebody or the death of a family. That's, they don't care about the rate. They don't care about anything. Court says you got to sell, you got to sell. Somebody's going to get that deal. Somebody's going to get a new uh, a listing. Somebody's going to get a sale. Somebody's going to get a loan, right? So, and those could come from the attorney. That could come from the realtor. Accountants. Accountants are a great source of business, especially for our business purpose loan referral program. Once you all become seniors, you can sign people up for the referral program and get business purpose loans. Uh, from accountants, they have a lot of people. And if they find, and if you tell them, yeah, you're going to make 75 basis points, they will be knocking your door down to refer you people. And, you know, especially uh, when tax season comes around, people need money. 
or when it's not tax season and the accountant needs money and they're figuring out how to make money by referring you customers. So accountants, another good way and financial planners, another good way. You can network at events where all of these professionals will be at. And believe me, you introduce yourself, you be proactive. We have a great products. That's the beautiful thing. We're not going to be talking to them about our Fannie Mae rates are so low. No, we're going to be talking to them about our business purpose loans, you know, all of the actionable item loans that we have for their investors uh, that they are, especially financial planners and accountants. So a lot of different networking opportunities. If you all recall one, one uh, Friday file review where, um, the the MLO picked up that deal from a networking event that he drove like almost an hour to this networking event, stood up, introduced himself, met somebody there, and that person introduced him to somebody, and that person did a loan, and they, and we disclosed the file. So, and this is a newbie to the to the company, and that was his first file. So it does work. Networking is a great way to do it, especially in person. Believe it or not. There's only so much you're going to do sitting in front of the computer. And don't forget our event is a perfect place to do that. Real Estate Abs Weekend Miami 2023 is December 1st through 3rd. Absolutely. And, uh, there'll be a lot of realtors and loan officers and all that kind of stuff. That's one of the reasons we like to do it. We like, it's a captive audience for our team. You know, we're going to have realtors. And we're going to have investors there. Plus, we're going to have industry professionals, you know, AEs and stuff there. Your AEs who you can meet in person. It's always good to meet them in person. But believe me, there's going to be realtors there. I have cards from realtors that I'm talking to still from last year. I'm going to get a deal eventually from one of those realtors. You know, there's going to be a DSCR deal that's going to come from one of those for sure, or a foreign national deal that's going to come from one of those. You just got to keep, you know, plugging along, plugging along, plugging along, building rapport, being consistent. And next thing you know, boom, 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 boom. They got a deal and they're going to reach out to you because you've been consistently reaching out to them. So, Besides networking, another good way, this is how I got my first deal. This is how a lot of people get their first deal. Reach out to your sphere of influence. That is like, I think on every salesperson's first deal is like a friend or family. You know, mine was uh, a co-worker of one of my sister-in-laws, right? Uh, she needed to buy a place. I found her the place. My first deal was a double dip. I found her the place and I financed it for her and it wasn't even a listed property. So what did I have to do? Okay, getting creative here, folks. You, you all have probably never heard of the Bressers Cross Index Directory. <laughs> okay, that was really popular when people had landlines. A lot of people had landlines. The Bressers uh, Cross Index Directory would get a phone number and associate it to the address, right? So in this uh, directory, you could go and you could find like a, like a block, like a city block, and you could, you could go to every address in that block and find if there was a phone number associated with that address and then call the person. So for my first deal, I found this neighborhood that there were no listings in, and I sent out a letter, a handwritten letter. This is some techniques I saw there. Handwritten letter, like, hey, do you, you know, I have a buyer for that development. There's nobody in that development uh, that's for sale. Do you want to sell your place? Could I, you know, are you interested in selling your place? I had like four people actually replied to the letter, and three of them I sold the place and then sold them places. And one of those places I sold to my first deal. So, you got to get proactive and you got to get creative. This was before internet. So that's what I ended up doing. So my first deal again was from a friend and family, but you know, text, everybody has email contacts. Everybody has social media contacts. Everybody has friends and everybody has family. All of those people, you could put them all on one big Excel spreadsheet, you know, get your database going, set it up however you want to set it up and then start your campaigns. You know, you could, you could go to, for example, uh, to like MailChimp, for example, and you could set up all these contacts in there. You could segment them 
into different groups, however you want to segment them. And then you could do drip campaigns to each of them and to let them know what you're doing. Right. And it's a week, you know, uh, a little info blast once a week to everybody and, you know, call some of them up to wouldn't hurt the ones you have more, uh, confidence with, and, you know, slowly, but surely you're going to ger generate business from people that are warm right, to your approach. Right. They're not going to hang up on you. They may wonder why you're calling. But then I'm going to hang up on you like, a, like as if you were just uh, calling a list of people. So a lot of ways that you could reach out to your sphere of influence and let them know what you do for a You living. know, I want to touch base on that real quick, Jose, because something that we talk about on the so my sales training and on other trainings, too, that we've done is that it hurts to see somebody in your sphere do a loan with someone else right? That, that hurts you. you. You see somebody in your sphere on Facebook, friends, family, and they post their new home and they didn't finance it with you. But guess what? That's your fault, right? That's our fault as the loan officer, because we didn't let them know. So the biggest thing when Jose is talking about your sphere and reaching out, you have to let them know that this is what you do. You don't have to be salesy, but you have to call them and let them know, text them and let them know every single person, you know, this is what I'm doing. So when you need financing, whether it's for a purchase or a refinance, think of me, I'm here to help you. If you don't do that, you can't be mad. You can't be upset. You're, you, you didn't do your job of making sure that every person in your phone should have a text message, letting them know what you do. Better yet, even a phone call, but at the bare, bare minimum, a text message. There should be posts you know, on your social media. You should be contacting people on there as well. So that's uh, one of the things that people, you know, I see a lot of people, oh, my friend, you know, refinanced or purchased a home and they didn't use me. That's our fault, right? We need to make sure that we get the word out there and we can't be upset if we didn't let them know what's going on. Right. And that this is what we do. And it's happened at one time or another to all of us. Unfortunately, you know, we, as much as we try every now and then somebody's going to slip through the cracks, but as long as you know, you're doing it, you can't feel bad about that. So, Next, uh, master product knowledge. Now, here's another obvious restatement of the obvious, right? In order to properly communicate the product benefits, you need to thoroughly understand the product. That's pretty obvious, but you would be surprised how many people get into this business. One of the most, I mean, the finance business, specifically the you know, real estate finance business is pretty complicated. A lot of responsibility, not a profession to be winging it, right? But you'd be surprised how many people <laughs> get that license and they think that's it. I got my license. I'm just going to wing it and get million dollar loans and everything. <laughs> you know? No, man, people, people pick up on that when, uh, when they know that, you know, it's, I'm not, how can I say, it? you know, when you're BSing them. You know, Say it in Spanish, something in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, so, you know, I mean, definitely just like uh, if you've all read or seen the movie on the book called The Secret, right? The Secret is based on the law of attraction, right? And that attraction occurs, and we're not talking about romantic attraction here. We're talking about, you know, like likes attract so if you are a positive minded then you know you attract positive minded people and so forth and so on so you know if you're a professional you're gonna attract professional deals and vice versa so you know which means that you gotta always be on top of your game with your education with your continuing education. Heck, I've been 28 years in the business and I learn something new every day. I don't think I know everything. I'm looking to learn because I don't want to mess up. This industry is changing. What did we learn today, Jose? We took three hours today of servicing education. Yeah, yep. Lot Most of, of that was new. Actual, actual, all that was new. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah, that was crazy. I didn't know, I didn't know anything about servicing. I sure do now, yep. you know, but... Um, 
And then, uh, okay, no, today I learned something too as I was uh, looking over the structure on a loan, for example, with the team leaders today. We we're lo looking over a loan, and it was about uh, if, if you're doing a cash out refi, but you're doing it for the purpose of buying out the interest of an owner of the property, and they've been on title for at, everybody's been on title for at least 12 months. That's not considered a cash out refi, even though you're cashing money out, as long as you don't get a dime from the proceeds are going to pay off the other uh, owner. So that was pretty cool. You know, so learn. Something so as long as our it. borrower doesn't get the cash, as long as the people right. leave, leaving get the cash, it's fine. Right. Right. And and they've owned it for at least 12 months. This is Fannie Mae. Uh, this is a Fannie Mae loan. So that's from the Fannie Mae selling guide. Now, it took us a whole two minutes three minutes to find the information going to the selling guy. We we're going over and like, wait a minute. I don't know. Sounds a little weird. Right. And everything was beautiful. And we found our answer, but it's about having these habits, the right habits set up of, okay, let me go to the resource and let me check it out uh, before I start floundering about. Right. Cause there's resources set up for all these things, which leads us to our second very important point there. Product knowledge is essential to adding value and being a loan consultant. You know, how can you be a loan consultant if you don't know what you're talking about? You can't consult. Then you're just being a pushy salesman, right? And, you know, people don't like that, those pushy salesmen. So, uh, important thing here. Now, this can be a little tricky because I don't think you'd want to go too deep into the segmentation, uh, you know, but you want to identify your target market or markets, right? Uh, you want to have some idea of what you may want to specialize in, you know, de define your segment. Do you want to work more refis, purchases, investors, what it is, what is it that you're looking to do? And, try to figure out a plan to achieve that goal, but you're not gonna be able to do that unless you identify, right? Customize the approach, your approach to specific clients, right? It's real important. If you're dealing with an investor, obviously it's one approach. If you're dealing with a primary home buyer, it's another approach. They have different objectives, different interests the different skill sets that you would need to employ when you're analyzing the scenarios, totally different. And find your niche. If you, I mean, the niche that I would say is really popular uh, with the mortgage calculator, as you can all figure out is the investors, right? That's uh, probably would be our main target market, but that doesn't mean that we ignore other opportunities that just means that's that would be our niche now this is pretty easy for us right because we have it all set up for you i mean we have the action plan for you're creating a strong online presence it's in the very first section of the knowledge center uh when you're setting up your social media profiles we're telling you er pretty much every single website to go to to set up your your social media profile so we're we're really big on that but so you definitely want to leverage all the different social media platforms because you know we're going to have a lot of links all over the place all coming back to us you know we're all about building up seo uh, you you may want to have some type of a blog to share valuable industry related content the important thing about a blog is consistency, right? You got to do it. If you if it's an everyday blog, do it every day. If it's a weekly blog, do it weekly. But you got to be consistent. Don't don't do it off and on because then people will lose interest. And I suggest to use LinkedIn as the number one uh, growing network for actual engagement, right? You're not going to want to use like a Facebook. You're going to want to use your LinkedIn, and they have a great newsletter blog platform that I use. Uh, and it's very effective. All of that is going to allow you to build credibility and trust, right? There's a lot of different ways that customers uh, vet us, you know, so they're going to look at our social media presence, see what kind of reviews we have, stuff like that. It's all really important. You're going to want to provide, this is, 
pretty obvious, but you got to, again, restating the obvious here now, right? You want to provide excellent customer service and you want to seek feedback. That's all really important because that, that positive client experience is going to result in more referrals for you more business if you are responsive and transparent you're going to get more business what i mean by responsive well we can start by answering the phone <laughs> returning calls returning emails returning texts you know just what the normal things people expect for you to do right reply don't don't be lost or else you'll lose their business and definitely is real important. I love empowering borrowers, letting them know the who, what, when, where, and why showing them data, showing them documentation, whatever it is to prove the point that I have at my, at my, uh, at my disposal that I'm able to share with them. I will share with them because I want them to understand and not feel that they got somehow or another, uh, ripped off. And last but not least, right? This is real important. Set clear and achievable goals. There's an acronym for that. Uh, it's called set SMART goals. And what do they mean by SMART? Well, they don't mean intelligent. They're talking about goals that are specific, right? S specific goals, goals that are measurable so you can see if you're attaining success closer to success goals that are achievable goals that are relevant a very important phrase there i love relevant and goals that are time based right and along with that you want to make sure that you uh, have some kind of time management in place so that you're not just haphazardly doing everything so quite a bit of stuff that, that we uh, covered here in, in your first 90 days above and beyond, you know, training and getting cleared to take leads. And this is a business that, that you're building and you all are the captain of your ship, right? You're, you're the ones that are uh, responsible for the success. We give you the tools. Plenty of tools, plenty of resources, and it's up to you to implement them. Know your resources, request assistance, and you will succeed. Got two good newbie questions here, Jose. It's a good question, uh, especially with the way we are. If someone was to ask, are we a lender or a broker? How do you approach that question? We are a lender, for sure we are a lender, but we operate on multiple channels. So when we as a lender cannot find the, the, the product that is best for that borrower, we have the advantage of being able to go to our brokered options and seek the best. Uh, so we're not held back by just being a lender and we're not held back by just being a broker we have the best of both worlds exactly that's and then pretty having, much the same as the the next question right, the next well. question but uh jose do you want to explain the non-delegated part i guess not delegated correspondent as far as how what kind of lender we are right yeah yeah we are a non-delegated correspondent lender we generate documents, right? So we generate disclosure documents. We generate redisclosure documents like the loan estimate, the initial closing disclosure. We generate closing documents, the, the, the package. We fund the loan, right? But we do not service the loan. We do not underwrite the loan in-house either. The investor uh, underwrites the loan and then we sell the loan to that investor. So they underwrite it for us as like a courtesy, so to speak. And then uh, we, we sell them the loan, but that gives us uh, a lot of benefits when we're the lender. Lenders get better pricing than brokers because we have more responsibilities in the process and because we are lending our own 
money. But at the same time, being a lender has many benefits over being a broker. The, 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 one of the benefits I can say, uh, for example, is no commission limits. <laughs> you know, you, there, you, there is no max. And I just had a $1.6 million loan closing. If I would have been a broker, I would have been out half, more than half of that commission would have just not been paid because it would have been above and beyond the limit for whatever broker outlet was out there because they don't they don't pay you a thirty two thousand dollar commission uh, they have limits they have limits on those so besides that but that that almost sounds like you know uh, i don't know i mean i i I like it to be all more for the benefit of the borrower and the borrowers definitely benefit when they're dealing with a lender generally are going to benefit you know they're going to get better pricing they're going to get better terms right so Lower, the uh, the appraisal is the one thing that we uh, definitely want to make sure that we're in control of. Uh, sometimes if we're not the lender, the appraisal could be null and void uh, when you're a broker, right? You don't control the appraisal or the appraisal process, and you're not able to transfer it at will. Whereas if we're the lender, we can do whatever we want, right? Once we order that, so it's good for our customers. They pay once, and no matter what kind of loan we do, that one report whether we fund the loan or we find someone else to fund the loan, we own that appraisal and we're going to take it all the way through the process. They'll never have to pay again. Whereas brokers, sometimes you have to pay two, three, four times uh, if you have a very difficult file that doesn't find the right home at the start. Whereas where we can find a home without having to redo anything, right? So that's that's really what it comes down to on the back end. It's a little hard to explain that to a customer, but for you guys here on the call, that's really uh, one of the best things we do when we're doing loans uh, that are difficult, right? The easy loans, not as complicated, but a difficult loan, you definitely wanna have the flexibility to say, oh, now that I got this appraisal back, it's not going to work here. We need to take the appraisal and the whole file somewhere else for another program to get new guidelines that do work, right? When you're a broker, you can't do that. You have to start over from scratch. Which is part of, at the end of the day, having everything in our name, right? That's why you can do that with the appraisal. All the documents are always going to be in our name. You're not going to be looked at as a, you know, middleman, right? Your your company name is different from the name on the actual loan documents, right? Here at the mortgage calculator or any correspondent lender, your, you know, company name that you work for is the name on the documents and the name on the appraisal, which is how we don't have to, uh, you know, go through the same appraisal transfer because the uh, appraisal is in our name. So definitely some benefits there, but the best thing about us as a correspondent lender is that if we can't fund it with our own money, we can always broker it through our over 80 wholesale partners. So best of both worlds. But, but do recall there, uh, we do an underwrite. So, cause in your question there, you were putting that, uh, we underwrite. That's the one thing, uh, Chris, that we don't do in-house exactly and mind you we've done it before right we've been uh at a branch that was delegated meaning that we underwrite in-house and it's just it's just not effective right it's much easier to have the investor that's buying the loan underwrite it correctly from the start and let them do what they do best which is underwrite to their guidelines all right uh, and yes, Neil, the appraiser, uh, appraisals are assigned to the mortgage calculator. They are in our name. And that's why we have the flexibility to do with them uh, what we what we can, want, right? Whatever we want. So cool. Great questions there. Uh, I think we should wrap it up, though. We went a little over here, but great training there, Jose. Also, some of these topics... Uh, we do have uh, in-depth sales trainings on some of the individual topics that Jose went over. So some of those topics have their own sales training, uh, which is just a half an hour long training. So we have those on our uh, YouTube channel as well that you can check out things like time management, things like making calls and stuff like that. We have uh, more in-depth training on those as well that you should check out. So uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Jose, great presentation. And uh, we do this 7 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday and Wednesday where we go through a different topic. So we will see you uh, next week, 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday for the next episode of the Loan Officer Training Series with the Mortgage Calculator. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.